So today, Andy talked with us about this struggle that we all have to be in control. I mean, think about it. Every single one of us, no matter how old or young we are, we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And when someone makes a decision or does something to stop that, oh, we feel frustrated or sad or angry. You see, the reason is, is because we want to have control. And we also feel like we should have control over other people, what they say, how they treat us. I mean, think about it. It's so hard when you see your parents fighting and you can't make them get along. Or your friends. It's frustrating when you wish you could get these friends to get along, but they're just constantly fighting. Or or maybe you have siblings in your house and you're just going, oh, I wish they didn't struggle with this. It would make our home a lot easier. You see, this whole year, if there's anything we've learned, is that we don't have control. COVID-19 has made us worship in a lot of different ways, and we might be missing getting to worship together in kids' community, at FCC, hanging out at Linger Longer. We may miss youth group and getting to be together in a huge group instead of always split up in our small groups. You might be frustrated because you're having to wear a mask all the time, or maybe you're frustrated because you don't get to go to school the way school used to be. You see, we're realizing that we don't have control. But today, Andy talked about how this has always been the reality. We never have control over other people. However, as citizens of heaven, we are called to control our own response to the situations and the things and the decisions happening around us. In fact, in the letter of 1 Timothy that Paul wrote to Timothy, this young pastor, he actually said our response of worship even is to pray as a people together. And so that's what we are encouraged to do is that we can't control other people. We don't get to control COVID. We don't get to control the rules that maybe our parents set up for us or the way that our teachers are teaching our class or whether our family gets along. We don't get to control that. But we can control how we respond to that. And God says our response should be prayer. Now, Andy walked us through one way to pray together and some things to remember. But I wanted to give us a simple tool to help us to remember prayer. Because really prayer is just having a conversation. It's not a rigid formula that you have to say these exact words, right? So we don't have to be worried when we go to God in prayer. It's just talking with God, spending time with him, having a conversation. So today we're gonna do prayer using our hand. So I'm gonna show you each finger. So hold it up with me and then we're gonna talk through each one, okay? So the first part of prayer is praise. So when we go in prayer to God, we should be praising God. Praise him for who he is, his characteristics. In fact, not only does this worship God and give him honor for who he is, but it helps to remind us who he is, that he's loving, he's good, he's sovereign, because oftentimes we forget. The next part is thanks. Give thanks to God, which we're going to spend a lot of time doing this month as we celebrate Thanksgiving, but give thanks to God for the things that he's done and the things that he is doing in the midst of the season where maybe you feel like you don't have control. The next part is confess. And confess is just telling God the things that you're doing wrong, saying sorry. Maybe this is a time to practice confessing to God when you are trying to be in control. You're trying to control other people. You're trying to take control of a situation and you're obsessing over it even though you can't control it. So confess to God, confess your sins. Remember, that's why Jesus came and died on the cross, to free us from that. So we just go to him and we confess. The next part is intercede. And that's just a fancy word for praying for others. So if you have conflict with your parents or your teachers, other authority figures, if you're worried and about who the next president's going to be. If you're worried about the politicians in your area, what are the things that we can do? We can pray. We can actually intercede for them, pray for them, that God would be with them, to give them wisdom, to help them. And then what else do we do? Petition. And to use that word too, petition is just another big fancy word for really bringing your requests to God, asking him for the things that you need. Maybe you need help to have a good attitude about the person you're interceding for. Maybe not only are you going to intercede for your parent, but you're going to ask God to help you, to relinquish control to him, to not be obsessed, to maybe even to ask him to have peace. So petition is just talking to God, spending time with him, asking for the things that you need. Now, did you notice this big part? All of these are prayer, talking to God, but this part here, listen. Because part of prayer is it's a conversation. And so it's listening to God. 
Now, I want to remind you, there is not an age requirement to talk to God or to hear from God. In fact, the Bible is so clear. There's so many examples of children, young people, hearing from God, being called by God. So don't discredit yourself for any reason, regardless of your sin or the things that you're struggling with. God will speak to you. He speaks to us in different ways. Sometimes he'll speak to us um, through a song, through a verse, through another person, even your parent, even your authority figure. So part of prayer is listening. Now, this prayer, you can do it by talking out loud audibly. You can do it by just quietly in your head. You can do it by writing. You can do it by drawing. So remember, you can pray anywhere. You can be playing. You can be riding your bike. You could be surfing. You could be going for a walk, whatever you're doing. But just remember, talk with God. This week, I kind of urge you, if there's an area where you're really struggling with control, practice this prayer and listen. How does God give you peace? How does he encourage you and to remind you he is actually in control?